Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a Fire Sworn Friday, and we're going to be celebrating that with this fun crimes deck. So, I have incorporated a lot of uh, unit spawn uh, crimes. We're incorporating Ulrich, Fallen Knights. Uh, we've clipped out Roderick DeWitt and, um, and our good friend Von Hurst. I find they just often get removed in the current meta, but you can sub them in. Uh, personally, I just like to have more crimes, um, but Damnation is a ton of fun. Uh, it does play for a lot of heads up play against a lot of these decks right now. Um, but if you wanted, you could sub this out. I think it's a good sub for uh, Von Hurst. You would still have uh, not all 12 of these are crimes because of Sacred Flame, uh, but you would still have uh, 11 crimes minus the one, so you'd have 10. I can do math. Uh, anyway, um, I run Sir Secure Tooth instead of Roderick. I like him a little bit more. He works really well with crimes. Uh, the immunity is fantastic, and you just get these constant two-point buffs every time you play a crime. Uh, and then we've got Horse Sun for good tempo. Uh, nice oppressive plays that he gets with those cut-up lackeys. Obviously, you know, if you want to make your own tweaks, do it. Uh, but this deck has a good amount of removal, a strong amount of uh, dam of. Uh, of point play uh, so you can kind of go thin rounds or big rounds kind of up to you I will say you could also swap out this smuggle for payday but I've looked for that spawn and those coins several times and found it really useful casino bouncers are also just really nice flexible plays to be made uh, and as always we're filming on twitch uh, many thanks to those of you who are joining uh, hey Slav squirrel always great to have you uh, and it's always great to get your feedback as we're playing live decks uh, so if you haven't Please look above in the description, uh, send me a follow on Twitch, and then whenever I go live you'll get notifications, um, and you can join in and show your th share your thoughts, make fun of my stupid plays, and have some fun get a uh, It's a great you community, get, a get in there and have some fun. Uh, I do want to celebrate a little bit, uh, I know it's probably been a couple days since this has happened, I always pre-record because I have a busy life, um, but many many thanks to all of you and all of your support, we now hit 500 subscribers on YouTube. A huge milestone for me, and I'm just really, really grateful. Thank you. Uh, I don't like to carry more than one bloody good fun. Double Cross is a weird, weird deck to play against. Um, so I really do like Casino Bouncers. I find they get good value. Uh, I'd like to get a Halfling in here. But it looks like instead we're going to be looking at some other place. Damnation isn't quite as good against uh, against this uh, Nilfgaard deck. So, one of the things I kind of hate about uh, about this deck, uh, you know, you do need to get Ulrich with a Fallen Knight, otherwise your targets are only going to be Mutant Maker, um, and if you miss those, then you just kind of break onto him. So I'm going to try to hold out on Fallen Knights here, just go for some point play, uh, and possibly get out of this after three cards played. But we kind of have everything else we want here. We have an excommunication with a congregation, uh, Fallen Knight, Hellveed, Sacred Flame. So I do definitely have enough to kind of contest this round. Uh, just kind of depends on how much I want to do it. I don't really see another way of getting out of this. I don't want to get pinched too much by double cross deck. So we are going to go ahead here, drop down this Fallen Knight, and we'll boost him up. Just note that if, uh, if this all goes awry, you know exactly what to blame it on. So portal play with Ardfain Cavalry is always a great way to get some value. Um, we did cycle back in our bloody good funds, uh, but they would have worked really well here since we're already at zero coins. We could have just gone ahead for this removal. Uh, but instead we're going to go for Congregation. Uh, actually, let's start with Smuggle first. Uh, it gets us a uh, Fire Sworn on each row, so that way Congregation can find all three Zealots onto either row. Uh, and then what we're also able to do here is have three coins. We can drop down Sir Skewer Tooth uh, and then get full value out of the other two crimes that we have. Oh, sorry, three crimes. And Excommunication often will find us a fourth crime, uh, and that'll be what we're targeting. Um, Duchess Informant is interesting, so this does spawn a unit. So uh, Fallen Knight works really, really well with that. Uh, since every time he plays a Duchess Informant, he's going to get a spawn unit. So I love the play. I think it's very, very wise. We do want the immunity here. Uh, Skewer Tooth is going to get some bulk on him, uh, and this kind of pushes him out of range. 
Uh, but the Artorius play with Duchess Informa is really strong. He's otherwise just creating a one power copy. And so your unit is relatively weak. Uh, sometimes I'll pick Artfain Cavalry. Uh, but the Duchess Informant here with Fallen Knights makes a lot of sense. Uh, playing the card from my hand that's going to boost these units and, and get more of them. Like, uh, like Congregation is also just an incredible point of play from the opponent. So here, since uh, since we're already pretty full up here, I'm going to keep going down there, and then we can play Hellveed to the range row. Um, this is going to give us two points to Skewer Tooth, three points to Fallen Knight, plus an additional point for the Intimidate, and an additional six points. So they're just making a lot of point play with the Congregate. I'm also trying to deny the opponent value um, by playing them myself first. <laughs> and the opponent here just getting... Getting all the rolls, um, maximizing all the value they can maximize, uh, getting all these fallen knights, so really causing us some problems. Uh, here I'm going to go ahead and go for excommunication, uh, pretty easy to go for. Uh, collusion uh, works really well once we have generated enough units. We do have a crown splitter, we have uh, fire sworn. Um, I don't believe we have a cut up though, and we are shy on coins. But I need this mutant maker uh, just in case I miss the ones. Okay, we do have we have cut ups and casino bouncers. Skewer tooth is a crown splitter, and then fire sworn zealots and fawn knight are fire sworn. So here we're gonna proc damage, boost, and spawn two units to a random row. So pretty happy with that outcome. Pushes us back over on top of the opponent, uh, so they can't just dry pass does boost our lowest unit, which uh, worked out well as a Duchess Informant. Uh, this is create and play. Uh, here they're able to create uh, one of these, these bloody good friends, so that works out well for them. Uh, and unfortunately they keep pushing everything out of range, so we can't get death blow with our Diazirie. Uh, instead here I think we're going to go for Sacred Flame. That's going to get us four points. An additional two points of boost, though, which is not quite enough. Um, that being the case, I think instead we'll go for Hellveed. We have just enough room on melee row for Sacred Flame. So we'll go for Hellveed here. He's going to generate two units. He gets us just over that threshold. The opponent doesn't have any passive uh units uh, doesn't have any passive engines working so he does have to make active plays to generate full value but these fallen knights really getting triggered here uh this is gonna be a lot of vitality but there's only three more cards in the deck so not a huge deal for them and here we're going for sacred flame uh we are missing out on some value the opponent could take the dry pass here um, so we're gonna spend uh, we don't have enough room uh, So if we spend one coin, we're gonna go from 71 to 73 uh, From the unit spawned and then 70 we're gonna go up to 74 with fallen knight So I don't I don't love that place. So we're just gonna take the pass We're just gonna end the turn and go down a card if necessary here But the boost we get from Sacred Flame and Diazirie should hopefully push us over the edge. Uh, Secure Tooth is going to get an additional two points. Uh, Fallen Knight is going to get a point from those Intimidates. Uh, and then we'll be able to boost all of our units by one with Sacred Flame. Roderick coming out pulling a random gold card. Uh, that's a little bit interesting. Uh, Coup de Gras is going to get him Coup de Gras into hand for a future round as well as spawn an additional unit generating value off these fallen knights so i don't know why the opponent would play further maybe they were anticipating the invo pull here all right so right now we're gonna get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten points from sacred flame plus an additional ten points from diazirie uh, plus an additional two points from Diazirie. Um, so really only 22 points, so we'd be at 72, which is not enough, so we're just going to take the pass here. Deeply unfortunate for us. Uh, the opponent just able to get really, really good rolls with those, uh, with those diplomacies.
seeing Roderick, I do uh, think that it's very likely it's a it's a um, crimes deck. So uh, sorry that it's a uh, that's a ball deck, or they're using ball for additional value. Um, they're gonna play, be able to play Jacques out of our hand. We do just kind of want to try to deny them value. I think they're gonna go for a Joachim uh, coup de gras play. Trying to need two drops on their cards to max some value. Uh, and we are in a bit of a bad way uh, here. I think we're just gonna go ahead and use Ulrich here with the Peacemaker. Obviously not the preferred option for us, uh, but we don't really have a lot of other good choices. And it does push us up over up to 13 points here, so we do go uh, we do go uh, up in value to stay ahead of the opponent. That way we don't have to go down a card. My, my, the Van Morlehems, they truly spoil us. The opponent steals shock. It's just... So they could grab uh, three out of four of these cards. The one we wanted them to grab least was Jacques, and that's all they got. I mean, they, they had good odds to get it, and they did, so. All right, so here Jacques does play for 12 total points, which is bring, gonna bring us to 25. Um, and then we can spend some coins on him uh, to, get, uh, to get over the opponent. So that's what we're gonna do. The beast shall be born. So here we need to spend four coins in order to get ahead. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do that uh, with and, but instead of spending the coins we're gonna just go ahead and spawn a fire sworn zealot and um, uh, horse on senior plays really well in a tight round uh, just because we're able to generate so much value he of course plays for 14 points with two leader charges just on his own hey welcome Ezra's uh, we're doing some filming live on Twitch. I love to do, you know, two things at once because I only have so much time, especially when I'm on lunches. And holy crap, the opponent here getting this, uh, the Yen's Invo on the Fallen Knight now coming out for incredible value. Um, you know, probably the smartest choice there would have been to have actually converted this Yoakim using Horse on Senior. Uh, but we can't all be geniuses, as you guys know I love to say. Uh, we're going to go for Mutants Maker here. Um, and just go ahead and spend one coin. We're going to go down a card, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but Coup de Gras are gone, Yoakims are gone, and here we might be able to get a pass from the opponent and just use Diazirie to get one, two, three four, five, six, seven points of boost, plus an additional one with Ulrich and the Intimidate. Then we'll just spend enough coins with Shock to get maximum value. The opponent here instead making some interesting choices, so we're going to go ahead and use another Congregate Charge. Use Orson. Uh, and this pushes us back up in terms of value. <laughs> uh, Slav Squirrel always making great comments, but uh, Yoakim, I mean, the, the value here is the eight points, uh, eight point delta that Yoakim plays for, right? So, this is an incredibly strange play for me. I don't understand that really at all. Uh, we're just going to play Diazirie. It's going to get us more than enough boost. Uh, plus, we're going to generate four points of damage from these lackeys. So, uh, not bad for us. We end up in a three card round. Um, we still have one more charge, so just praying for a Fallen Knight. Halflings would be okay here as well. We do have uh, we do have Diazirie. Uh, this damnation is just not going to be helpful against this deck. Uh, so Halfling Safecracker here plays for five, uh, six, seven points. Um, but I feel like risky business today, so we're going to put back Bloody Good Fun and get another Bloody Good Fun, because, you know, why not? 
every lock holds the uh, now coup de gras is basically just playing for three points of damage plus a boost onto a congregate so it's not phenomenal uh, but we were looking for something like uh, congregation so we could get the crime um, here we get four points of damage from bloody good fun uh, plus the extra coin we have in the bank I like it we're gonna go for it uh, just denying value to the opponent Anglem is an interesting play. Uh, they do get Sacred Flame. Uh, I have not seen Anglem get played, I don't think, ever. Uh, but I've always wanted to try to see if I can make her work. It is a really interesting play to do with uh, uh, with Assimilate if you can steal enough of the opponent's units. So we want to go for the Congregate proc here, and then we're going to just erase Anglem. Uh, so these guys play for three points. Either way, Anglem doesn't get any other boost. Um, so it is kind of uh, sixes what, which one we kill. Um, just in case they have something to spawn something else for. Uh, for Firestorm, we'll go ahead and kill one of those. Again, she wasn't gonna. Get, if they have a boost card, it's gonna boost on uh, Angulame or Firestorm Zealot anyway. Uh, bribery, you know, this is a roll of dice whether or not the opponent gets something that's really good or really bad. Uh, Skewer Tooth is probably the worst of the choices, and this is gonna end up being a tied round. Uh, so we end up with a draw. Uh, you see, a really tight gameplay there. Uh, would have been better to preserve some value for final round the opponent just getting really really good value out of our fallen knights and getting the perfect hand to kind of marry those things together uh interesting assimilate deck i know there's a lot of players out there who have argued assimilate's really good uh you can just be all of your opponent's stuff but i think the delta on uh, uh, on what you're able to generate and who you're able to steal is, uh, is highly variable um, and can be really dangerous in certain situations and the provision costs aren't always equal to one another granted they can benefit you like last time the opponent was playing several five provision duchess informants to, to uh, copy my fallen knights um, but they're not always the best so I love eavesdrop is just like a first play you're not showing any kind of cards uh, halflings are even better though so we'll keep them um, I actually really like this hand. We can go with Horse on Senior with Halfling Safe Crack. Uh, go for a one recycle on excommunication. Um, I'm going to put back Bloody Good Fun. Alright, two Fallen Knights is fantastic. So here we are going to just go for Halfling Safe Cracker. They're just great to start with. They get boosted by five for each of those crimes, and they have Intimidate. So every time we play a crime card, they're going to get boosted by one as well. Amphibious Assault coming out very early. Unless you've seen something that tells you that your opponent is Devotion, I do recommend holding on to these cards for just a little while longer. Uh, they don't make a ton of sense coming out super early because uh, you don't know if I'm carrying a squirrel or not. So Halfling Safecracker is a crown splitter. So I do actually want uh, Casino Bouncers out here. Um, they do get some good value for us um, in terms of tempo. They also get some nice thinning. And I don't have any coins yet, so I don't mind getting them out uh, sooner than later. Now Smuggle here works really nice with Horse on Senior. Um, and with like a single Fallen Knight if I want to as well. Um, so the biggest things I'm looking for now are just ways to get three coins with Horse on Senior, uh, and also to uh, have a target for excommunication. So I think actually using all three of these charges uh, now is not the worst choice. Uh, we can put some real pressure on the opponent this round. Uh, my only question is if I want to get down one Fallen Knight, and I think I do. Come at me if you must. Don't pick this sword at all. You 
So this way, Fallen Knight gets boosted up to seven. We get our three coins. We have two Fire Sworn Zealots right next to each other. Um, so they're all ready to go for Horse on Senior. Might be a bit of an overplay, if we're being honest. Oh yeah, a lot of people are having uh, Ezra's in chat just talking about May using uh, uh, using the Vatier no unit deck with Petri's filter, uh, tainted ale uh, as a deck a really good play against Patricidal Fury. You're seeing a lot on ladder. You can go ahead and copy using Imposter. You copy the Arnulf for 13 points and then you steal him with Vatier, 24 points of st of uh, of conversion right there with 11 of those being a flip from the opponent to you so just crazy good value you get out of that play All right here we are going to go for horse sun and better in other rounds perhaps but i'm not i'm not displeased with this we're going to just go ahead and boost up one of these cut up lackeys i anticipate the opponent's going to get out of this room round pretty soon that was very kind i don't know why they're thanking me for the play but everybody gets to make choices uh, now we can play Eavesdrop, it's going to do some damage, it's going to boost up Halfling Safecracker and Fallen Knight, as well as Horson. Uh, get us some consistency and put some put some coins in our pocket for next turn. Did I just use the leader you. prematurely? Yeah, a lot of people concerned about me overplaying this round. Again, it's possible. Uh, going up against Shield Wall though. Uh, you really need to be able to pressure them round two. Uh, and sometimes that pressure can just come by way of playing all of your cards. Uh, so I really like Halfling Safecracker here to go early. Uh, I do like all of these crowns. The Bloody Good Fun is probably the least useful. Congregation is phenomenal here to go with Excommunication. I, I didn't feel cramped on needing uh, one on those Firesworn Zealots because Collusion, I get two of them. Um, Smuggle also works pretty well here. Uh, this is probably actually a lot of value for us this round. And then next round we can save these Congregations. We get Crown Splitter, Crown Splitter. Oh, let's swap this one out. Okay, this is even better. Now we can generate some value uh, with Fallen Knight if we want to. But we're just going to start with Safecracker here. It goes up by 5. Yeah, I, under I understand uh, people in chat still saying this is a lot of early commitment. Now that's that, that was that was true. I admitted it right up front. But Shield Wall uh, presents an interesting conundrum in that you have to really make uh, the the proper pressure plays early, and you have to commit quite a bit to to make sure to shut them down. Although I will say they just played three four provision cards, so. I think they were happy to see what we committed. Remember Sintra. So no excess damage is going to be dealt with this payday. We have to kind of decide how much we value this. I will say if we could get a cut up down, which we can't, but if we could get a cut up down, then collusion is going to do some extra damage and value there. Um, I will. I do think that eavesdrop is probably our best choice here. We do get some uh, consistency. Your we get five coins. Bloody good life. fun is fine, um, but I'd rather have payday here. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back. And the game is kind of freaked out a little bit here. Ben Palm is not showing a shield for some reason. Even though he definitely does have one. So, not sure why that's going on. We'll need to report that. Uh, now here we could just go ahead and take the pass if we wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it is a bit tempting. But Skewer Tooth with one, two, three, four crimes is still pretty juicy. Um, and we do get some consistency out of excommunication here. So I think we're going to go ahead and use it. The opponent's not able to get at him. Uh, 
Um, some people in, in comments saying they think this could be a Ragnar deck. Uh, it could be. I've seen these used in, in dual decks, though, too. Uh, in the tournament I recently did, somebody brought a very similar deck to this. Just, it's kind of a, I, I would think of this less as like a Ragnar point slam deck and more as a, a Northern Realms deck that's been teched out to counter, yeah, to counter Skellige. Going for the Erasure on the Halfling here. Uh, a little bit weird to me uh, to see a lot of spends here, but they are staying up in value in terms of cards. Uh, Varaxis is obviously problematic here with the Onsais and the Fallen Knight. Um, I would prefer to carry them over until next round. So I think here we're going to be super weird, and we're actually just going to go... Ugh. Weird choices have to be made in the name of the greater good. Um, we'll probably just want to keep one card, and that one card is probably going to be Fallen Knight. But this gives us a excommunication target, which hopefully can trigger us uh, double crimes. We also do get these uh, additional six points from the congregation now and we are going to get uh each of those six those three units boosted by an additional point so this plays for nine points now so we still get some decent value here we also have fire sworn on the board so we get the collusion so playing a cut up wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for us either you are not worthy of the fire's purity not worthy of its light Um, here I actually like Helvede. It's not the second crime, but this way we can generate three of these guys. Uh, just getting some good value. We can go for a congregation here. We can also get an additional two coins from this collusion. I think the opponent now going for the purify on the skewer tooth. Um, we couldn't really play around that super well. We could have played the melee, but you know, we are where we are. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, we'll go for congregation here now. Here to spill out into that volume. Basically, the goal here is to just drain the opponent of all their cards, uh, and then go into a very short round three. Uh, Jacques plays for more value than Varaxis does. Uh, but yeah, Skiritooth is is very vulnerable now to an additional play from the opponent. Uh, they're continuing to add up shields here. It's not the worst choice in the world. Uh, we do have a crown splitter, so we're going to get one of these guys boosted. You are worthy neither of mercy nor forgiveness. This is just being able here to add up a lot of value. Really quickly. Thank you. That was very kind. Spending a lot of shields, I still am anticipating that Ragnar play. And if there isn't a Ragnar play, um, I think the opponent here has used up a lot of the charges, the removal, uh, and two of their best engines. So I think their second round is starting to look a lot like my first round. So I'm happy to see that. The damage on the Secure Tooth, I think, is setting up for another duel. I think the opponent just spending cards. Uh, I'm happy to see on Sace is the one out and not Selkirk. Selkirk does require uh, some setup beforehand. But we get Jacques Grandmaster. Um, really, really happy with each of these cards. I'd say the only one that doesn't really fit super well is Diaz. Uh, but Diaz is going to get us one coin, uh, which is a point. Plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points of boost. So eight points of total value. Uh, I think I would rather have Ulrich for an additional Fallen Knight. Um, Furka would also not be so bad. Smuggle kind of worse, and Damnation probably the worst of all, <laughs> of, all of our options. Alright, Donamir coming down. Um, a coat of arms is not 
Again, I'm guessing it's going to be a cell perk, so we'll just go ahead and spend this fall night first. This is not my best game I've ever played. We'll, we'll be honest with all the viewers on that one, okay? Uh, Queen Adalia coming out. I'm guessing to grab some kind of archer or rural guards is an interesting play. Certainly not what I was expecting. I must act no matter the price. So here, Damnation finds two points of value onto Adalia, so we're just gonna hold off on yes, using you. that. Have you made your offering? Uh, we'll just add the coin to Jacques, it's not gonna go anywhere else, so... You can see here, if we would've gotten one more point of value, it would've been more worthwhile for us. I don't the know what the shield ahead. wall usage is for. Um, but here, I think we're just gonna remove shields just to remove value from Ragnar. Uh, but the opponent is still going to have enough points. Regardless. Thank you. That was very kind. It's a Varaxis reset. Let's see that coming. That's superbly interesting round. But the opponent just getting that extra card in there was what clinched the deal for him. Diaz would have been 12 points. I thought we counted out. It would have been 8. It would have been 3 under the... Oh, I guess it would have been an additional... A coin and an Intimidate. Yeah, it would have been better than Damnation, that's for sure. Again, you can add Von Hurst if you want. Von Hurst is actually, honestly, probably a better option. We're going to jump into one more game. See if we can close the deal and get a W. Self-proclaimed authority. Oh, shield wall is kind of difficult for this deck if we're all being honest with each other. So uh, we're here on blue coin once again. Uh, we do get Furco this time for the first time in forever. Uh, Halfling safe crackers are pretty nice here. I think we'll go for Halfling safe crackers, mutant maker, bloody good fun, payday, and then perhaps use a single leader charge with X communication as well. Um, Although we do get Fire Sworn, uh, Crown Splitters. So if I can get a cut up, that actually might work really, really well. So that being the case, I'm going to put. Oh, let's see, we get one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll let this sit. Or Sunworks is a cut up if we need him. But here I think the Halfling Safe Crackers might just be enough to either get a, just good general value, enough to close out the round and get the W this round or to force out bigger plays from the opponent to get the removal or punishment onto them. And we don't have it in hand, but we do get an extra an extra crime here from Furco. Um, Smuggle is a good option here for us just to get some carryover coin value and an extra proc unit. But eavesdrop is probably my intended choice just so we can get some draw consistency. Carrick frigates are perfect. Uh, we're actually just gonna wait and use damnation. But Carrick frigates are the perfect feed for damnation. So for those of you not familiar with how it actually should work, Damage three adjacent units by two. For every enemy unit destroyed, you spawn a fire sworn zealot. So you can get a 12 no points of, of switch swap value uh, working for you. It's quite nice. 
Um, here, I'm just going to remove this Radovid Royal Guard. That forces them to think they need to protect this frigate. I'm happy with that. Um, that works pretty well. Uh, payday would have worked there as well. I just like to get the paydays after the Bloody Good Fund. That way I preserve some coin value. But I also want to make sure that the opponent didn't like boost up these volunteers. Uh, so now payday is looking really nice here for us. Not without one reason. They hold us stern. You can see these halfling safe crackers just generate so much value. Uh, I mean, we had five crimes in deck, so each of them played for three plus five coming down for eight each, and then they get an additional point every time you actually play the crime. Uh, pretty insane, if we're being honest with each other. Scrub this, scrub that for uh, I'm happy to see that this did not happen, so now we can go for Furco. We're gonna play this damnation. And we convert all those points to ourselves. All your base are belong to us! Uh, it is onto the opposite row, by the way, so you do want to just keep that in mind to make sure you have room for it. Uh, but here, I think that played really well for us. Um, got some good thinning. We already have Diaz. So, if they if they choose to hold on to this Carrick Marine for longer, we'll go ahead and use Diaz to convert that value. Shut out this round. Otherwise, Mutant's Maker looks really nice here, just for general coins. Uh, but Excommunication, also pretty great. I do love Excommunication used with uh, Horsun, because you can uh, target a crime and get double crimes played, dealing two damage each from the cut-up lackeys, so you get eight total damage, uh, plus two boost to Horsun, so Excommunication with Horsun is one of my favorite combos to use. I think the opponent here just kind of deciding how much they want to stick into this round. Uh, if they want to spend one of their dueling units to go after these safe crackers. I'm uh, guessing that they're going to be going for Amphibious Assault here. Which is neither the worst nor the best choice. Uh, getting a second frigate out is interesting to me. Um, I mean, we can't really say no to this play, so I'm not going to. Uh, yeah. I mean, that kind of speaks for itself. We erase seven points of value from the opponent's side, uh, force him to play another soldier unit next to this character frigate that he probably doesn't want to play. more than happy to play Mutants Maker if he goes one more time. That way we can just carry over two coins instead of just zero. But I don't feel pinched into doing it. I'll also point out we don't have, this time we didn't have most of our actual value cards in Ulrich, Fallen Knights. Uh, I'd like to get one of the Casino Bouncers and play them pretty quickly next turn just to get the Tutors out and to get full tempo value. We're, we're quite happy with this with this current situation so I do like horse Sun with a bunch of crimes uh, we are looking to trend that direction uh, mutants maker really not all that helpful to us now fall Knight's great I'm just kind of looking for Ulrich uh, even though again I do like the crimes of horse Sun I just would rather have Ulrich Okay, casino bouncers are exactly what we were looking for. Uh, we can preserve some value here. I do think we actually want to go for horse on. Um, the question is, how do we want to go for him? Uh, Hellveed actually would work okay here. So these are cut ups. I don't have any crown splitters. That's the only unfortunate part of this round. Uh, otherwise, Collusion would be looking very nice to use. Uh, but I think we can save Collusion for the unit procs. 
uh, instead here just kind of go for these casino bouncers just deciding whether or not to spend a coin on them but we need all three coins for horse on senior and I don't mind using collusion here so it is going to do four damage to the highest enemy unit so Adalia came out with the first Carrick Frigate, so that's where he's getting this this third one from, for those of you whose minds are currently being blown. Um, yes, and this you. damage is going to go to the highest offering. unit. The now for those of you wondering why, why didn't you play Fallen Knight? That would have been, he would have gotten boosted to seven points. Yes, that's true, but here I'm trying to close out this round pretty quickly and keep my tempo edge. Also, you've seen how I've bricked into Ulrich. <laughs> I actually shot a video for this last night, uh, but I had to end it in the middle of, this, of the video, so I had to cancel it, but in the video I was shooting, I, I totally bricked Ulrich in round three where he had no targets. So Ulrich can be really good, but he can also be super clunky. Uh, getting the extra Fallen Knight can be really helpful. So here we've also skewered the opponent in terms of decisions. They have to decide how much they value the removal of these cut up lackeys. Uh, Onsace is going to be one of the only ways to really deal with those. And he needs to go to melee to get that zeal. Which means that they're not going to get crew onto this Carrick Frigate. It also will give us two four point units. Uh, one of which is going to take the four damage from this collusion. And if we can get really lucky... We'll get one of the the one random damage from Cut Blackie to hit this friggin'. So here he trades in his second charge of Amphibious Assault. A little strangely, might I add. Um, for use there. So I do need one uh, I do need one Fire Sworn unit to trigger this collusion for maximum value. Uh, so I'm gonna just leave this Fire Sworn Zealot now. We'll go for collusion right now. And here you see uh, the four damage coming down against Tamarian Drummer, followed by the additional double damage procs. One of those removing the uh, volunteer, another one hitting this Tamarian Drummer. So just going for massive damage there. And here, Diaz Irie is actually looking pretty nice just because we're going to get boosts to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. Uh, and then uh, an, uh, uh, with the with the follow-up punish of an additional four points uh, so we would get this Carrick Frigate down uh, from it's gonna be boosted up to six okay so here we see the Unsays coming down uh, the opponent is able to regenerate this value so they're just trying to remove that which I think is a decent choice uh, not the best what is a decent choice uh, and then here we I think we see them setting up for a replay with Veraxis uh, we're going to go for excommunication and see if we can't double that into a second crime here. You are not worthy of the fires, uh, we do get bloody good fun. Uh, we only have four points of damage, but I think we are going to go for this Carrick Frigate. I was hoping to hit that Tamarian Drummer with this cut up lackey one damage proc, uh, but this is fine. It's going to get boosted to three and we can use Diaz Eria to wipe it off and boost all of our units and do an additional damage. So Ezra uh, just asked a great question. How long does it take me for me to find the perfect games? Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you something that not a lot of people know unless you followed me for a little while, but I do everything in one show because I give you the honest truth. This is like, I just queue in the games and I show you what I queue into. Um, I would say like one out of every 10 videos I have to scrap just because I get like five losses in a row and I have to refix I have to jigger the deck or I get like a phone call or I have to I get pulled away for something for work or something like that so usually I do them during my lunch we do it all in one take uh, and it's and it's the real deal uh, so here I will say we could just take the pass here um, and judging that we do have only one more use out of Diaz um, and I don't know what else the opponent has to spend. You know, it looks good here, but it might be really great next round. 
Uh, I do think it's still really pretty good here, though. So we erase a bunch of value from the opponent. He has to make a 14-point play to catch up. Uh, maybe like a blue stripe scout and a Varaxis would get him there. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this outcome. So Helvede and Fallen Knight make for a fantastic combo. If we can get the other Fallen Knight, Ulrich and Jacques, or Sacred Flame, we should have this on lock. So it also, I think the other thing for me, I'm learning more about cool video editing techniques and hopefully uh, my wife and I are, are gonna be doing that together and we'll do some cool effects and stuff like that. But uh, I only have so much time and I feel like you guys could watch some like really finely honed videos that are really beautiful and have a lot of cool stuff going on. This is a horrible decision. Um, I'm exceptionally content. I was planning to pass here anyway. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, but uh, or you could get a bunch of content with a bunch of decks and, and uh, knowing the Gwent community, uh, we just, most of the people I know are just always looking for like a cool new idea. Um, I think most of the community likes one or two factions and, and predominantly only plays those factions. I'd say I'm like very much the exception to the rule where I just like to play anything and everything. Uh, we're gonna put smuggle away okay eavesdrop is nice here with Helvede. um and you know it's the same it's essentially the same thing for me to put this back right i'm gonna have to put a card back uh but it's only an additional two procs from Helvede, so i'd rather have you know congregation ends up being basically the same thing um So I don't know how much removal he's going to have. I'm Don't guessing he's going to go for Pizzagata. I don't know how much more removal he's going to carry. I, I doubt it's very much. I think we've seen both of the... Oh, no, just one Tritum. So he could come down with another Tritum. Be problematic. We're just splitting rows here. Just in case there's row punish. But more predominantly, that way we can put... Fire Sworn Zealots on any road that we want. Congregation's the most value here because it's a crime plus the boost. Um, so that's a little bit better. Then we can go for Sacred Flame and finish it off with Helvede. Helvede does get zeal, so. But here we go up by a whole bunch of points. Um, but anyway, but so I, I do a deck a day. I do every day of the week is a different day. Uh, today we're filming for tomorrow, which is Friday, Fire Sworn Fridays. We cover Syndicate. Squirrel Saturdays, we cover Scoia'tael. Massacre Mondays, we do Skellige. Camarion Tuesdays, we do Northern Realms. Wild Hunt Wednesdays, we do uh, we do Monsters. Oh man, this kind of sucks. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, um, Thirsty Thursdays, we do Nilfgaard. So we're going Sacred Flame first, for anyone wondering, just because we need to have the, it doesn't have zeal, so we have to wait for it. Uh, I think this Baron is going to clinch the game for our opponent, though. Although, I will say the one benefit we have is that we have final say, so uh, this is going to be really close. Visigato, here you go for the punish. Uh, the, the Veil saves us the bleed. Uh, we just have to pray that this doesn't kill any of our units. Uh, I think he's going to drop this shield wall onto the Tridom. Yeah, that was a bit of a misplay. I think they just forgot there. Alright, so now we can go for Helvede. He's going to spawn two units. So we get some boost there. And just enough to close it out. We get the W. Uh, the, shield, the shield would not have made a difference there. He would have gotten an additional two points plus one proc of damage. So we still would have won by one point. Although, there's a chance that it could have hit one of those units that got boosted. So, uh, you know, last game... We made a misplay. Would have had the win on that draw for in the first game. And uh, this game, the opponent made a misplay. And sometimes that's how it goes. You all get real, raw footage. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, for those of you on Twitch, hang around. We'll have more fun. For those of you on YouTube, come join us on Twitch. It's so much fun. Seriously, we have a riot. Uh, and uh, I'm always grateful. Never expected for all your support. And thank you, thank you, thank you again for 500 subscriptions. Uh, it means the world to me. Uh, it was really helpful to see so much support. 
I do put in a bit of work on this as a side, as just like a side hobby, and I and I really love all you guys' support. Uh, give me more challenges, give me more thoughts, leave likes, and until next time, good luck on the path. Get out there and keep on gwenting.